All right, so if you like me are getting frustrated time and time again with how to transfer your footage from your iPhone to your computer, especially if you're using AirDrop, you're definitely gonna wanna watch this video. I'm gonna go over the four ways that you can transfer footage from your iPhone to your computer and the way that I do it, which is a little bit unconventional and not many people know about this method. To me, it's the best way to transfer your footage from your iPhone to your computer, even if it is a little bit slow. All right, the first way that you can do it, and I'm sure a lot of you who are editing with Final Cut Pro use this method, you can actually connect your iPhone directly to your computer, open up Final Cut Pro, and use the import window in order to import your files directly into Final Cut Pro. Now, here's the big reason I don't use this method. When you do that, it's going to copy all of your footage inside the Final Cut Pro library, and I personally like to store my footage outside the Final Cut Pro library in Finder so that in the future if I need to access that footage or while I'm editing if I need to see that footage in Finder, it's much easier to access versus opening up the Final Cut Pro library file and accessing it that way. So this is a great method if you're someone who prefers to store your media inside the Final Cut Pro library, but it's not the method that I prefer. The next method that you can use is waiting for your footage on your phone to sync via iCloud Photo Library. Now this process can be very slow because if you're shooting in 4K and waiting for everything to upload to the cloud, it can take a long time over Wi-Fi especially for it to upload and then sync down to your computer. When I'm at a coffee shop or someplace with really fast internet, this method certainly works, but because at home or while I'm out on the road using a cellular connection, it's not terribly reliable, so I don't often use this method either. AirDrop is a great way to send files from your phone or your iPad to a computer, and I use this all the time for photos and very small amounts of file transfers. Where this gets unreliable for me is when I'm transferring large amounts of data in the form of 4K footage from my iPhone. Sure, on occasion it does work and it transfers the footage no problem, but more often than not I get some kind of transfer error, something doesn't sync over, something doesn't transfer over, and I have to start all over again. Because this creates some friction and pain points in my workflow, I don't really have the time to deal with it, so I rely on my preferred method which is using Image Capture, an app that's built into macOS on every Mac, and that's the method that we're gonna cover in today's tutorial. Now, what's the big drawback of that method? You have to directly connect your phone to your computer using a lightning, and in my case, USB-C cable, and that means that your footage, yes, your 4K footage, it's going to transfer at USB 2.0 speeds, which was one of the major disappointments about the iPhone 14 release. They did not change the port, from Lightning to USB-C, and we don't get to take advantage of those faster transfer speeds like we can with an iPad mini and some of the iPads that have USB-C connectivity. So until the iPhone 15 comes out with hopefully a USB-C connection, I have to transfer at USB 2.0 speeds from my iPhone to my computer. Let's get into that process right now. So the first thing we're going to do is connect my iPhone 13 Pro Max to my M1 14 inch MacBook Pro using a lightning to USB-C cable. Get that all connected up into an open USB-C port and we hear that familiar charging sound and we know that we are connected. All right, so to open image capture, we're gonna go up to spotlight and then type in image capture. And then when it's selected in blue, we're gonna hit return and it's gonna open this up. Let's go ahead and make this full screen. So I need to unlock my phone. It's telling me I need to unlock the phone and now I have it unlocked. And you can see I've got some footage here that I recorded earlier today, which is for a channel member video that I'm working on, showing sort of just what I'm doing to prepare for VidSummit for this year. So all I need to do is select these files, and I'm going to select all these um, MOV files. Now I need to tell Image Capture where I want to transfer these photos to. So we're going to click here down on Pictures and choose Other, and I'm going to navigate to my Movies folder and then I'm gonna to go to my YouTube members folder. Now I don't have a file structure created for this, so I'm gonna switch over to Finder and then go to the same place, YouTube members, and I'm gonna create a new folder that says uh, 20, let's just call this 002-2022-9 and call it preparing for vid summit. Now, I want my folder structure in here, and for those of you who have been watching the channel for a while, you know that I use Finder folder templates to quickly get my Finder folder structure into my project folder. So I'm gonna to go to Dropbox, and then I'm going to go to YouTube, and then my free templates, and I've got my 
Finder folder template here, and I'm going to paste that in. And then I've got my Final Cut library template as well. Let's just expand this a little bit. And I'm going to copy that into my Final Cut Pro folder. So we'll copy that and paste that here. Then I'm going to go ahead and rename this. We'll call this 002 Prep for Vid Summit. And this is where, in this media folder, this is where I'm going to place all of the footage from my iPhone. So we're going to put it into uh, A roll, and I'm going to call this iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, if we switch back to image capture, you can see these folders have updated in the chooser window here. And I can go to media, film, A roll, because most of this is A roll, and then go to iPhone 13 Pro Max, hit choose. And with those selected, I want to hit the download button. I don't want to download all of the photos and videos that are on my phone. I just want to download the ones that are selected. So I'm going to hit download. And you're going to see that this is importing all of the movie files to that folder. And if we switch back to Finder, you'll see that they're populating here and transferring directly from my phone into Finder. Now this transfers everything in the original high quality. It's not doing any kind of compression or doing anything to the video files to make them a lower quality or faster to transfer, anything like that. Now you can see that this does take a little while, again, because it's a USB 2.0 speed. Now for those of you who are curious about my Finder folder template, as well as my Final Cut Pro library template, these are templates that I create so that the start of a new project doesn't take a long time because I'm creating all of these Finder folders every single time I start a new project. I created a Finder folder template that I could copy and paste into a new project folder so that I could get up and running as quickly as possible. I have two videos on my channel that go into that more in depth, and I'll link to them below in the description. I sell my Finder folder and my Final Cut Pro library templates on my website, matthewobrien.co forward slash shop. You're welcome to pick those up. They're $10 a piece, or you can buy the bundle that has my Final Cut Pro library template, my Final Cut Pro shorts library template, and my Finder folder template all together for $25. Just so you understand what the, the Final Cut Pro library template is, if we go to the Final Cut Pro project and I double click it to open it, you'll see it opens up here in Final Cut Pro. And I have in the sidebar here, all of this organization with events projects, footage, audio stills, graphic screen recordings with two projects, one in the 4K 2 to 1 aspect ratio and one in 4K UHD. But again, you can see that we have all of these uh, these events and folders and smart collections that are there. I don't have to create those every single time I start a new video in Final Cut Pro. I just copy that Final Cut Pro library template over to a new project and then start importing my footage. So that's a really handy tool and a way to get started with your projects much quicker. So I highly recommend checking out the video links down in the description to learn more if you wanna speed up your Final Cut Pro workflow. So that's the process. If you have any questions, hit me down below. And if you're interested in learning more about my Final Cut Pro and Finder templates, click on this video right here to learn more. That's all I've got for this one. Until the next one, I'll see you all soon. Don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli.